Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and many of you have been asking me to make a what's on my iPhone 8 Plus video, and here it is. I've got my iPhone 8 Plus. You'll see I have my SIM card in it, and this was actually something I switched to yesterday. You'll see my battery is not doing as great as it would normally do because I switched to it late yesterday. It has to do a bunch of things in the background to catch up with what was on my iPhone 10, and this was really hurting my eyes. I've told you in other videos that it does bother my eyes, the OLED screen. I really like this phone, but when it bothers my eyes, I have to switch so that my eyes are less strained. So that's just something that happens to about 10% of people. I'll leave a link so you can check out that video. So I'm using the 8 Plus, and I haven't put it on the charger at all today. So you'll see I'm at 33% and I don't close background apps or anything like that. And this is actually pretty poor battery for me. You'll see my battery percentage is at 100%. If I go down here, I've had nine hours and 20 minutes of usage, 12 hours and 40 minutes of standby time. This was unplugged or taken off the charger. I was wirelessly charging this. Uh, it was taken off the charger at about 6.30 this morning. So you'll see here, this is my background activity, the things I've been doing today. So those are what was taking up most of the background activity, mail, things like that. I switched from Edison Mail back to the original Mail app, and that's because Edison Mail just doesn't search as fast, and it's harder to see between the two different or many different emails that you have. Now you'll see my home screen is very similar to that of my 10, and the reason for that is I like a pretty standard layout. You'll see here, uh, pretty similar between both devices. But what you'll see is I keep the things I use the most on the home page, and then I keep the secondary things on a second page. I try not to go over two pages. It's just the way I manage things. I keep my texts here, the things I use the most, kind of in the bottom, and it kind of progresses that way at the top. So all of my social media things, these are pretty straightforward. This is inbox by Gmail. I use that for my Gmail. YouTube, of course, Creator Studio. YouTube and Famebit, and then my news apps, Heartfeed, I've used for a long time, and I find myself using Google News quite a bit these days too. Apple News, I'll try and use some more in Flipboard once in a while. Now things, many people have been asking me to talk about things. I find that I don't use it as much as I had hoped to. Uh, things is a great and very powerful app. That is a reminders app, and you'll see you can do different things. So maybe I wanna start a new to-do, a new project, new area to do. You set it to do, you set the time with the date, and it's a really nice interface. It's one of my favorite interfaces for an app of that of this sort, but for whatever reason, I just don't find myself using it that much. I normally do my reminders using Siri, which by default puts them in the reminders app from Apple, unless you say specifically to use things. So I go back and forth. I use notes a lot, and then, of course, Facebook has its own folder. They don't They're not allowed to run in the background, anything like that, or use location data ever, and that's the way that is. Uh, let's go over to this one. Extras is where I put all those Apple apps, things like that. Uh, finance, I've talked about that before. Those are pretty straightforward, just your typical banking and then money whiz. Monument Valley 2, I keep it on here, I think for nostalgia, I really like it. And then CBS, uh, I think I've been using this to watch, or maybe that's NBC, so I haven't really been using CBS lately. I thought I was, maybe for the new Star Trek Discovery series, and then I, after I was done watching that and the season was over, I stopped and removed it. Now, for photo and video, I don't find myself using many of these apps that often, uh, but they're just here because I use them. Now, if I use any of these, it's usually Filmic Pro. It's a great professional video app that you can do video with and set everything like your exposure, your white balance, uh, different different profiles. You'll see it has a, an audio meter here as well for metering. And it's such a great app and it's worth every penny if you're going to be doing these things. So you can change the frame rate, resolution, audio. There's presets for your device, all sorts of things that are really, really high end as far as when it comes to the camera I'm using now, right now is probably has the same or less features than some of this. So it's a great app and worth any every penny, like I said. Pixelmator is something I use all the time, mostly on the Mac side, but I do use it here, and mostly on the iPad, though, and that's pretty much it. All of these are great apps, but that's what I use the most. LumaFusion is something I've been using on the iPad, but if you want to edit a video on the iPhone, iMovie is great for that as well. 1Password for some password management. 
Nest. So Ping is a pinging app. You can ping things like my website here, Zolotech, and it gives you the information. This is the network information, the IP address, its latency. You'll see how many milliseconds it's returning in, and then you have all of your different packets that were sent and, and everything, the max and the loss and all that sort of thing. It's all in here. I think it's a free app. It's real handy when you have to do some networking, troubleshooting, things like that. Google Photos, of course, Movies. Uh, movies is great. If you haven't used Movies and you have multiple devices and multiple movies from, say, Google and maybe iTunes, things like that, you can merge them all into one place and have access on either platform. So this will take your movies that you have on Google Play Movies, your movies that you have on iTunes, and then let you play them on either or. Most of the movies work for that. I've been trying out just about every email app that I can find. So I've tried everything from Spark to Edison to Outlook, and this one I'm not using right now, but I just need to delete it. And then Snapchat, uh, I don't really use hardly at all. Cosmo goes with that little robot I did a video on. I don't use Snapchat at all. And then Punk Post is for sending cards. So maybe you want to send a card to someone. Uh, a lot of the time they give free ones out, but maybe you need to send a card for Mother's Day or an anniversary, for example. Do an anniversary. You can say fun, sweet, simple. Add, add a message and then someone hand writes it, delivers it. You can have confetti in there. And it's usually $5 or something like that if you want to send a card. It's handwritten, not handwritten from you, of, co of course, but it is handwritten. Social, these are the social things I use. I'm finding that I'm using Apollo more and more. Uh, Apollo is a Reddit app that's really good, and that's about it. Pages and Word, I put both of these on here today, actually. I was trying to open a document from an email, I'm trying to read a PDF, or not a PDF, a Word document, and I was having problems getting it open with Edison. And that's why I switched over as well. I couldn't get it to open in Edison. It opened right up in the standard email app. I don't have a third page here and I do have entertainment, but I don't really, I don't really watch videos too much other than from YouTube on my phone. I normally use an iPad or a normal television for that. I know a lot of you have been inviting me to pay, play Fortnite, especially on Xbox. Uh, maybe I'll use a PC and do that. And sometime we can join on and, and play if I'm on there. Uh, it's B I G Z. So big Z. And, uh, if I'm on there on Xbox, you can join me and that's it. So that's everything on my iPhone. Uh, I don't use a cover or a case with it when I'm using it. When I'm not using this phone, I'll put this one in a case and vice versa, just so it doesn't get damaged while I'm using it. And I carry both usually where I go, uh, if I'm doing anything important, hopefully the battery, well, the battery is pretty good actually, but uh, if it gets better, that'd be great. And that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts. If there's any apps you think I should be trying out, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.